Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. So today I am looking at two books on writing craft. I just finished my Robert McKee book finally, so I have the playlist up. So I thought I would look at a couple other books that I just recently read on writing craft that take two very different approaches. So we're going to discuss that today. Oh, but before we do, I have a mail package that I'm going to open. So I'm going to open this right now. Amazon package, which is always fun to get. Ooh. Oh, this is a book written by Jeremy M. Moore called One for the Road that he sent me. So thank you, Jeremy. And I have no idea what this is about, but the cover is certainly provocative. I like the bright colors. So uh, let's take a look at what this is. Ooh, they have like skeleton faces. Okay. I really like the cover. One for the road. Awaken confused and alone in a sweltering desert landscape, Miguel finds shelter in what he thinks is the crumbling ruins of a small bar. However, this rundown shack has a dark secret and a terrifying purpose. Okay, this looks like fun. So thanks, Jeremy. I will try to get to this very soon. I will add it to my stack of indie books. Okay, so we're talking about good writing. What about good books about writing craft? Well, I have two for you here that are very different. So let's take a look. So the first book on writing that I'm going to look at today is brand new, and that is called Book Craft, How to Write Books Readers Love from First Draft to Final Polish by Derek Murphy. Many of you guys might know Derek Murphy because he is on uh, YouTube. If you are a writer, you probably have come across some of his videos because he has a lot of videos about writing craft, and he's been uh, doing this for years. I mean, I've been a subscribed to his channel for a long time, and I always see what he's up to. So I pre-ordered this because I was very uh, interested in what he had to say. So I read this. I was probably one of the first one of the first people to get a review of this book on Amazon. And to tell you the truth, the first few reviews were not very good. But I went back and checked, and it looks like more people are leaving it positive reviews for this book. My review was kind of a halfway positive, halfway not. I gave it three stars. And I, I wrote that there was a lot of useful information in this book, and there is, but it, I found it to be the way he put it together, somewhat convoluted. If you're familiar with his videos, and it's pretty much the same message, he is all about writing to market, writing with a very specific outline, and he does provide an outline that I think is a useful outline if you're writing a young adult fantasy. I would not apply it to every type of fiction. And that's where I have the problem with some of what Derek asserts. He put this book together and it's quite long. He kind of set it up as this like magic uh, initiation, which I thought that concept was pretty cool where it's like, you know, now you're ready to begin. I liked how he had like, you know, set up your workspace, light a candle, have a crystal maybe. So it, it becomes like a, a ritual of writing. There were a lot of cool things in the book, but it, it just was a little bit um, bogged down with that kind of stuff. First of all, he had so many metaphors. Every time there was a new metaphor, I would highlight it just to see. So, you know, I feel like I'm being a little mean, like I don't want to pick on Derek, but, you know, after reading uh, Robert McKee's story, which is so succinct and so organized that I feel like perhaps Derek Murphy bit off a little more than he can chew with this one. A simple approach probably would have been better. It's hard to organize this kind of stuff. And when you're loading it down with uh, metaphors and a lot of quotes, he quoted in one chapter so many different people. And just to nitpick, you know, and I, I make a lot of mistakes when I self-publish too, but he misspelled Edgar Allan Poe a couple times, which is one of my pet peeves. It's Allen with an A, not Allen with an E. Again, nitpicking, but if you're going to be giving people advice on how to write, you really have to be scrupulous about your own editing. I think he's addressing a new writer, a young writer maybe, somebody just starting out. But I think the problem with some of this advice is that there are like proclamations that I don't necessarily agree with. Like he'll, he wrote uh, about like not 
using dialogue to create suspense or something like that when absolutely you can do that or not writing in flashbacks when books like um ghost story is like all it's it is the whole story is told in dialogue in flashbacks very successfully i think peter straub knows what he's doing so to to make these proclamations where maybe an inexperienced writer would would take that on and and think well oh well Derek says I shouldn't do that I I just think that that is I don't want to say it's dangerous but I I don't advise following this advice to the letter if you like Derek's uh, videos as I do and I I was happy to read his book and I, I got some things out of it definitely then I would recommend it for that but I can't recommend it as like a go to bible and I wrote this in my review and I might completely be off base with this assessment but just from watching his videos and his message, he has a very anti-art message. And I think that's coming from maybe his own personal experiences. I'm just gleaning this from his book and also from his videos that he tried to write with his feelings and his gut and wasn't successful. So he switched to writing commercial fiction following a certain formula, emulating a book like Twilight or something and breaking it down. So there's nothing wrong with that approach at all. In fact, one of my most useful things that I ever spent 99 bucks on was James Patterson's Masterclass, which is all about how to write commercial fiction. I have a great book from the 70s by Dean Koontz on the same subject. There's nothing wrong with with that approach. In fact, you can be very successful doing that. But I feel like with Derek, he's grinding this ax about don't think of yourself as an artist and uh, just, you know, you got to follow this formula and you got to, you got to, you know, he it gets into this, like the whole like hero's journey, which is all useful material, but take it with a grain of salt. Like when you are writing, there are so many different approaches. And I'm going to talk about that with the next book that I discussed today, whatever is really makes sense to you as a writer, take that in and get rid of the rest. Because if you just to the letter, follow this stuff, it might not work for you. You as the writer have to decide your method. Don't let anyone tell you it's the way to go. So that's my two cents. On to the next one. So this is, like I said, a completely different approach. And this is Writing into the Dark, How to Write a Novel Without an Outline by Dean Wesley Smith. Dean Wesley Smith has written like over 100 novels. He's an older gentleman. I've seen some of his lectures on uh, online. And he believes in this approach, and I found this fascinating, especially after reading Derek Murphy's book. And, and actually, I found this to be very refreshing. I gave this five stars, even though it's, it's a very short read. It might not be worth the Kindle price, but I really got a lot out of this. So he, he goes by Heinlein's Rules. Robert A. Heinlein was a prolific science fiction writer from the pulp era of the 40s and the 50s, and he came up with five rules for writers. One, you must write. Two, you must finish what you write. Three, you must refrain from rewriting except to editorial order. Four, you must put the work on the market. And five, you must keep the work on the market until it is sold. This is really hard, especially the part about not rewriting. But in his book, he explains how he does it. So what he does is outlines as he goes. So he'll start with a situation, a setting, a character. He's done ghostwriting where someone will maybe give him, hey, we need a, hey man, we need a book, um, 60,000 words about this character in this series uh, in a month, go. So then he's got to figure that out. So put the character in the setting and he, he writes about uh, going deep with it. Don't skim on the surface. And then as you go, as you write, after e- write scenes and write each chapter, let's say, as a scene, then take notes of handwritten notes, specifics like what color are her eyes, hair color, what's his name, all this stuff. So then you don't have to go back and figure it out. Because how many times, and I, I do this when I write, you know, I'll put like the bracket, restaurant name, because I don't want to take the time to look it up on Google. But then when I go back to edit, I'm like, what was I thinking, restaurant name? It's better, according to this author, to stop, pull up Google or whatever, and uh, find the restaurant name or make it up or whatever, or find the street name that you're looking for. Something that I picked up from his book, which I thought was very useful, is he has a writing computer that's not connected to the internet. 
and then an internet computer. I've been thinking about doing that. I have an old laptop that I could just use for writing because it does become a distraction when your Instagram alerts go off. So unlike Derek Murphy, who's all about the outline and sticking to those points, you know, this is where this happens and this is where you have your a big reveal and this is when you have your uh, all hope is lost moment and this is the moment where you save the cat or whatever it is this author who's probably has about 20 years on Derek Murphy at least who's written a lot of books as well over a hundred professionally suggests that you don't do that now I would say for someone who has had this much experience as this writer has all of this stuff about story structure he, he knows, although he claims we all have this innately. So what he's really talking about here is writing very creatively. Some people say pantser, although he says he, he finds that term silly. My approach has, has really been both. I love having an outline. Like a lot of times I already know what my twist is, but then I just work around that. And then I also discover from reading his book, I really like the idea that it's actually a lot more fun to be in that space creatively when you are discovering the book along with the reader. If you already do the outline, you put all the creativity in the outline, you create the outline. Let's say, oh, I, I made my story. Now I got to go back and actually write it. That sucks. I think that's what he's saying. And uh, you know what? I really kind of agree with him. Another thing that I found really meaningful in writing into the dark is this idea of writing as practice, writing every day as practice. So it doesn't become this great, like, like in Derek Murphy's, like this ritual where there's a, it's so serious and important. And then you get freaked out. It's like, it's too much pressure. A musician just doesn't show up at Carnegie hall with that kind of level of intensity and, uh, importance and sit down and play without practicing. Right. This makes sense to me. Writing every day is practice. Not everything you write maybe be that great, but according to these rules, you finish it, you put it out there. So think of it as practice and that takes the pressure off. Like I'm going to sit down and write something like, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to write just off the top of my head, a horror Western that takes the pressure off. I don't have this idea, like that pressure I'm putting on myself. It's not like anyone's paying me for this, but it's like, oh, I've got to write my next book and oh man what it's like I gotta get my outline and, and it's it's all this pressure when if I really sat down and just wrote into the dark about a western horror like you know a, a rodeo zombie story I could really have a lot of fun it could turn out really great according to these rules so I love the idea of writing as practice I'm going to try to incorporate these rules in my next writing project maybe I'll just do a short story so I don't have the pressure of, of a novel, but um, yeah. So two very different approaches, both valid. Let me know what you think. Have you read these two books? What are your opinions on writing craft? And do you think any of this is valid? I would love to hear your thoughts. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye.